Don't shave me, please. Hey, what's up, creatures? It's Em. And Danny. And today I'm back with another pet YouTuber react video. Today, Danny and I are going to be reacting to problematic viral animal videos. If you don't know me already, my name's Em. I'm a former zookeeper and I'm also an animal educator. And I'm Danny, ditto plus head model. <laughs> If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Also hit that notification bell down in the corner there so you don't miss a single upload. Now being an animal person, I am obsessed with watching a ton of animal videos, especially the really, really cute ones. But every so often I come across a cute viral animal video, which I think, hang on a second, this is actually cruelty. So today we're going to be giving our perspective on a couple of problematic animal videos that went viral and why they're a problem. Not my first time seeing any of these videos, but it's your first time seeing some of these, isn't it? It is, absolutely. The first video we're going to look at today is called Parrot and Hamster Playing with Hamster Wheel. I didn't come across this on YouTube. I actually saw it on Facebook where it has significantly more views than here on YouTube. That was my chair, not a fart. Nice. Oh my goodness. Yeah. He, he grabbed the hamster and, and threw him into the wheel. Mm-hmm. He's like, you're about... Oh! <gasps> Oh wow, no, no good. That's going to be a very dizzy hamster. Oh. It is. Um, and the crazy thing oh. is, look at the likes to dislikes ratio. People think this is absolutely hilarious. With hamsters and other small animals, if they become um, very stressed in a, a short period of time, they can die, they can have heart attacks. What I found actually that's really interesting about this is that the parrot pretty much deliberately put the hamster in there in the first place. Now, did someone teach this? To the parrot? That's what I find really disturbing. I think yes, because just looking at the way the video is set up, there is a camera right there on the wheel. I think that that parrot has been taught to um, put objects into the wheel and spin it, and the person, whoever it is that's actually who owns this video and shot it, probably then taught the parrot a command, which we can't hear because obviously there's really cute music playing over the top of this video. I do believe that the person behind the camera, though I cannot substantiate this, I do believe that they have taught that bird a command where he learns to put something into that wheel and spin it in order to get a reward. And furthermore, looking at the scale of the two animals, that's a baby hamster, which is why the parrot was able to get away with picking it up. As well as the hamster being a baby, what bothers me is if you've ever been bitten by a canure, which I have on a number of occasions, they have a very, very tough beak. They are not a soft-billed bird, no. and it's very tough. And that bird could very easily injure that baby hamster with its beak on, on its scruff, not to mention if that hamster really wanted to bite, it could deliver quite a painful bite. Yeah, there's significant risk to both of those animals right there. So when you see these sorts of videos, I'd really love you to question, is this actually cute? Is it funny? Why are these animals doing what they're doing? Is it a natural behavior? Because that wasn't natural. Okay, let's jump along again to another video. The next video that we are going to be looking at involves kittens, or one kitty in particular. A pet door, wavering, flapping. Flap, flap. We have a breach. <laughs> you wanna come in? You wanna stay out? What are we doing? Peekaboo! <laughs> so, cat coming through the. Oh wow, that's a whole lot of cat coming through the cat door. That cat needs a cat garage. That is morbidly obese that's horrible now it's it's really cute to see the cat squeezing through a small space like that but obviously that cat is incredibly unhealthy super super obese probably months away from some catastrophic like liver damage or sorry cat catastrophic, cat -catastrophic I, it was the pun i'm sorry not laughing at the cat <laughs> yeah but some catastrophic liver damage there for sure um looks cute but no fat cats not cute. Now I have to make a bit of a confession here. I love the look of fat or chubby animals because of popular media. You see like cute little pin badges of like a fat cat that looks like a potato. I think in popular culture we are taught that fat animals are cute, that they're really adorable. Now if an animal genuinely has a medical problem then I totally sympathize with owners who often try and exhaust every avenue to get their pet healthy. But the key thing is that animals, especially when they're pets, they don't make the decision 
on what they eat. Often it's their their parents, their pet parents who actually look after them. I hate saying owners. Normally it's their owners who decide what they eat, how they exercise, how much space they have. So when an animal becomes obese or morbidly obese, it's not the animal's fault. It is usually on the owner unless there is an underlying medical condition. So when I see something like that being pushed as like a really cute video and people are like, oh my God, it's such a cute fat animal. I love it when they're so fat. No, it's unhealthy. And unless, unless an animal is then given further treatment, it can have genuine um, health implications the way that humans can when they are you know at a healthy weight whether it is too heavy or too light for that particular person you can have heart failure you can have diabetes diabetes is a huge problem here in the states with a lot of animals because of the things that we feed animals so it's an issue no it definitely is an issue an animal like this is not going to be long lived but I've noticed that recently there seems to be a bit of a trend where morbidly obese animals are being showcased as cute and I've seen this significantly with sugar gliders yes right? I didn't even think of that yeah I've seen this with sugar gliders lately where it's actually people are doing this on purpose and they're making their pets morbidly obese obviously they are not living long these are animals meant to glide they're not meant to plummet down like paperweights like bean bags so it's just all wrong and, and just no, no more with the obese animals. It's up to you. You as a responsible pet owner have to keep these animals in the proper condition. As Em said, they don't know any better. So there's actually no excuse at this point. It's well known that morbid obesity is a major cause of death once it's present and sometimes it's actually irreversible as well. So even an animal like this that we're seeing, like this cat, probably hasn't got long to live, sadly. Sadly not. Um, but if you are, for whatever reason, struggling with getting your pet to a healthy weight, then the best thing you can do is address that. Talk to your veterinarian, talk to an animal dietitian. You do get pet nutritionists. Yeah. And you can actually get specifically created diets that yes. are reduced calorie for pets as well through your veterinarian or through specialized pet shops. So there are many, many options. Okay, the next video is going to be a funny dog walking on hind legs. Here we go. Oh, these, these videos really, really bother me a lot because I think most people don't know the story behind them. They don't. So what you see here, it looks almost like, oh my God, it's so cute. It's trying to walk like a little person. Someone's taught it a really cute trick. Yes and no, someone has taught it to do this but it's not nice the way that they teach them to do this. It is not natural. Do you wanna take it from here? Yeah, they are forced into that upright position and the second that they put their feet back down on all fours, they usually get some kind of negative reinforcement in the way of a beating. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen electrical prods used for this training and for some reason this seems to be an obsession that stems from Russian, um, Russian caretakers. I've seen this with everything from <clears throat> bears to dogs, cats, um, where they're obsessed in the circus world there on having animals walk on two feet. So now this translates over to the internet where we're seeing this where people are dressing the dogs in cute ways to kind of hide the fact or offset the fact that there was a lot of dark training involved in getting the animals to behave in this fashion. Now there's nothing wrong when you see someone who has taught their dog to walk on its hind legs as a quick trick and then they give them some positive reinforcements, some love and a treat. That is usually a very enjoyable experience for a dog but walking upright like this for a prolonged period, that puts a ton of stress on the animal's hip bones. The digestive system, the heart cannot function properly. They are not bipedal, they don't have the same kind of internal structure that we have in place to help us digest and pump the blood around. They have to be horizontal. They are quadrupeds, they walk on all fours. So to see an animal walking like this for a prolonged period of time is deeply upsetting. And you did make an, an interesting point that you think it stems from Russia. Yes, I have seen it with the bears walking there, but that's not to say it doesn't happen in other parts right. of the world. I've seen this a lot actually from where I grew up in Asia, so in China. I actually grew up in Hong Kong and I've seen people doing this for money on the streets mm -hmm. and I thought it was adorable as a child, um, but it is animal exploitation and you should support it. So if you are traveling around anywhere and you see people um, trying to get attention by having their cute animal walk around, maybe you can pay some money to take a picture with it, avoid. Because people who do this with their dogs, they go through these dogs like wildfire. They, as soon as the dog doesn't want to perform anymore, sometimes they are ad abandoned, sometimes they are killed. So you, and, and that's that's not an over-exaggeration. If the, the animal is not making them money, a lot of these people cannot afford to wait 
uh, for something else that's going to make them money. They're onto the next thing. They've got several dogs that can do this. So please do not support this. It's not cute. Okay, the next video we're going to be looking at, I have a lot to say about. It's called Siberian Husky Shaved Mo Mohawk Haircut Summer 2012. Why? Now, this isn't exactly a viral video, thank goodness, but I want to talk about this. Oh, this is this is not a good thing. Okay, I get it. Ha <laughs> ha It's got a mohawk. Yeah, it's everyone's so fluffy. Everyone's used to seeing the fluffy husky with all the hair, and so this is obviously unique and different and cute, but this is so bad for the dog. Why? <laughs> I'll take it from here. I'll tell you why. So, huskies are a double-coated breed. Other examples of double-coated breeds are caissons, um, Alaskan Malamutes, uh, Chow Chows. These are all double-coated breeds. And with a double-coated breed, it's very easy as an owner to get a lot of hatred when you're walking your animal in broad daylight in the summer and people will shout and say, your dog is too hot, you have to shave its coat. Do not shave your double-coated breed's dog. Uh, the same with Samoids. I've seen it with Samoids as well. Um, people feel the pressure to shave their dogs because it's either cute, they give them puppy cuts, which are very popular, especially in the Far East, and they're also very common here now in um, the US as well. It's when they just look really cute. It's very mm -hmm. popular with like the toy breeds. Um, but when you do this, when you shave a double-coated breed, you are taking away that dog's ability to warm itself and to cool itself. I know it's a little bit of an oxymoron when I say it out loud, but a double coat actually helps to insulate a dog in the winter and it helps to keep them cool in the summer. Yes. If you shave them down, the coat rarely comes back the same. The only time you should see a shaved husky or when you should shave your own husky or double coated breed is if they have say a staph infection and it's at the discretion of the veterinarians. It's a sad thing to do, but if you have to do it for medical reasons, I understand it, that's fine. But when you're doing something like this for fashion or to make a statement or to be funny it's not funny it's not cute it is hugely detrimental to the dog which can then suffer heat stroke it can suffer um sunburn sunburn exactly it can suffer so many different things unfortunately by reading the comments i can see there is still a lot of a lack of education around this topic when it comes to grooming dogs now i'm not a dog groomer but you never shave a double coated breed and there's people actually in the comments saying my husky loves being shaved i've done it every year for 10 years no heat stroke no sunburns fur grows back exactly the same takes about four months and he is much happier. All these people on here are just dumb. I spoke with three vets and a speciality vet service. Not sure why these idiots think it hurts them, but it doesn't. Wrong! You are wrong. There is no justification for shaving a double-coated breed. And maybe this person who commented is lucky. Maybe their husky didn't have any repercussions, but there are plenty that will. So please don't put pressure on other people to shave their double-coated breeds. Yes, you can give them a little bit of a tidy up, a bit of a clipping. Um, yes, if they have a medical problem, they should take care of that coat. If it has to come off, it has to come off. But if it's not an absolute life or death situation, please do not shave your double-coated breeds. It's not cute. Don't. Don't shave the husky. You're like a double-coated breed. I know, You I know am. what, actually? I'm like a double-coated breed. I've got, like, undercoat and top Wait, now coat. now I'm double-coated. Hold on, ready? Now I'm double-coated. You're double-coated? Don't shave me. Don't shave me, please. Oh, look, I look like somebody from Game of Thrones. Um... Dun, 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 the hound. Dun, dun, I was gonna dun, dun, say, it's definitely not Cal Drogo. No, that. <laughs> A little puppy named Kiva that got shaved. Oh, no! Stop! <laughs> he no longer has a double coat. If you ever shave my dog, I swear, Danny. I'm going to shave and cornrow your dog the first day you go away. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> So this next video that we're going to be looking at today is actually one that I had to take a screen recording of myself because I couldn't get it on um, YouTube, but it was a video that was going viral on Twitter because um, I like to play on lots of different social media and Twitter is a really interesting place to be, very interesting a lot of the time, especially when it comes to animals. I will let you know whose video this is, or maybe I won't in case they get loads of hate. Nah, I'm not going to let you know who's, whose video this is. Come Fred. We'll call them Fred. Here we go. This, this, is, this is not video. my video. It's a video I took off of Twitter. This, this is Fred's video. What is it? Oh, it's a little turtle. It? Yeah. Bye. <gasps> oh. Really 
movie's gone bad. Yeah. So, the story behind this video, um, and the reason why it is so upsetting, is that these people, who might be genuinely quite nice people to things that are not animals, um, <laughs> they found this turtle um, and they decided to take it home as a pet. I don't know how long they had it as a pet, but this is them releasing the animal back into the wild. I do not know if it was injured initially, I do not think it was, and I can see from the actual um, person who uploaded uh, that they kept it for a pet just for a little while, not a long time. There are lots of issues with this video. Dun, Take it away. Dun. Well, I have a lot of issues with this. First of all, it's probably illegal to take mm -hmm. the animals out of the wild. But we'll glaze over that one for the moment, all right? Because we've got so many other points to hit on this. <laughs> Two, we have the worldwide transmission of all kinds of nasty diseases, fungi. Fungi? Is that how you say fungi. it? Fungi. Fungi. I don't know if you say fungi. Because you're a fungi. All right, fungi. Um, bacteria, all kinds of infections can be spread to wild populations from captive populations. So please never release an animal like that without knowing the best case scenario, which is usually having a professional do it. And lastly, one of the worst things about this is the fact that you're negatively impacting the turtle populations, which they don't need today. This is kind of a pet peeve for me um, here in the U.S. with a native species, which is the box turtle. Mm -hmm. People find box turtles and decide to take them home as pets. Even if you take them home as a pet temporarily, you have sealed that animal's doom. Mostly because they exhibit um, a, a very specific, they live in a very specific territory. They exhibit a behavior called site fidelity, which means that they're born in an area. They learn that area. They never leave it because they can find all of their immediate needs there. Once you take an animal like a box turtle and put it outside of its range, if you return it to a place where it wasn't born, where it's not from, that turtle is dead. It will wander forever and looking for the places that it knows and it will get hit by a car or taken by a predator or just end up somewhere that it shouldn't. So please, 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 especially turtles, they are way more complex than a lot of people give them credit for. Leave them alone. They're cute. Leave them alone. We get it. Not only is it very illegal throughout many of the United States of America to bother any wildlife or to take it home, if you do take it home, that's another breach of the law. You are only supposed to take an animal home if you are a wildlife rehabilitator. And even then, sometimes it can be only up to a period of 24 hours. If you find an injured turtle or tortoise, the best thing you can do is contact a licensed wildlife rehabilitator. In the US, you must be licensed. It's not just someone who likes animals and wants to care for them, as much as those people are wonderful they need actual medical treatment if they are sick now with the release by taking that animal into captivity they've not only exposed that animal to new bacteria, and then they've put it straight away into the water which is not the correct place to release a turtle mind you if you're gonna release a turtle or a tortoise it has to be slowly in a place where there's lots of cover where they can get their energy up and go out into the wild themselves in an appropriate area but that fish has now eaten that turtle. It is going to suffer a very slow, very agonizing death. It's not quick. That fish wouldn't have chewed. No matter where you are, if you find an animal, please do not take it into captivity unless you have the permission to do so if the animal desperately needs it and if you are going to be responsible for that animal for the rest of its life. There is a fantastic book called Le Petit Prince. Do you, um, the Little Prince, do you have it here? No. Well. Le Petit Prince is a fantastic novel, it's, it's beautifully written and there is a wonderful quote in there which I will have to insert but it goes something along the lines of if you take the responsibility to tame something, if you tame something you are responsible for it forevermore. It's, it's a sort of derivative of that, I will put the quote in, it's a beautiful quote, I try and keep that in mind whenever I tame an animal it becomes your responsibility, you have to love it, you have to care for it. Nobody is entitled to steal an animal from the wild because they want to live out a fantasy of being a wildlife rehabilitator. People go through years of training to have the sort of level of expertise it takes to properly rehabilitate an animal. This one you're gonna enjoy. It's called Man Gives Hippo a Spank to Impress a Girl. Okay. LA Zoo. Okay, let's have a look-see. There's, there's badness there. Oh, so the guy's stepping over the barrier at the zoo where there are hippos grazing, sneaking up on them over the barrier. 
and he smacks the hippo and jumps over the fence. Okay. So clever. All right. This is exactly the type of little rat that I would throw in the exhibit with hippos with nothing but lettuce to cover himself for a day. It will humble him. He will never slap a hippo butt ever again. Now, this is an issue for a ton of reasons. As a former zookeeper, I cannot tell you the amount of time out of my day I would take to say, please don't put your keys in the lemur's enclosure. Please stop trying to feed the donkeys. Do not touch the goats, they will headbutt you. And all the time there's that one person who feels like, it's okay, I'm above the rules. I've got a connection with animals and will have to try and take a chance to mess with an animal for a selfie or to get like, like that magical hands-on moment of touching an animal. Yeah. Let me tell you something. It is so selfish not to read the, the, the barriers and the signs on the barriers, they are there for a reason. Please don't go in. It, there's nothing cool about that. That girl was laughing at that guy impressing her by slapping the hippo. Wow, you really want to impress a girl? Try that in the wild. You try that with a hippo. People think that hippos are these really cute, fun, jolly animals because, hey, they're fat which is what we were talking about at the beginning, and hippos look really cute. They kill more people in Africa than any other predator in Africa. They are so vicious. They are so territorial. There is no escaping when a hippo wants to run you down. They may be big, but they can move. They will outswim you. They will track you down. They will stomp you. They've got these huge teeth. And if that guy had fallen in there, that would not have ended well. Not only that, Danny, not only that, but zookeepers put in so much time from the moment an animal arrives or is born at the zoo, they give trust exercises, they build relationships. And what happens when idiots like this go in and think they're entitled to touch one of the animals? It can ruin and put in jeopardy the zookeepers that have to interact with these animals every day for feeding and cleaning and maintenance and medication administration. And if these animals lose, I'm sorry, if these animals lose their trust in people, guess who pays the price? The zookeepers who give their entire lives to actually looking after these animals. Don't touch animals in exhibits they are not yours to touch. I'm a talker down, you just, just, just walk away. Don't touch the animals, just, just walk away. I just don't understand why people have to do it! Hush. There are signs in multiple languages! Everywhere! Why color pictures in the corner of my mind? Let's go back to dogs because I like dogs because I'm getting a dog and his name's Kiba and he's the cutest animal ever and we've decided to stand forevermore. Um, but this is not Kiba <laughs> because I wouldn't do this to my dog. Um, this is called Little Baby and Dog Stealing Food from the Refrigerator. Sounds cute. 1.2 million views. Let's go. Oh, it's a Basset Hound. The Basset Hound is now aiding the stealing of food from the refrigerator by becoming an accomplice via stepladder. That's Look, a rough spot. To that's a terrible dog. spot. Hmm. That dog just moved off. It did not yeah. want to be there. Yeah. Now with basset hounds, they are not sadly the healthiest of breeds. They get a lot of strain on their hips, a lot of strain on their elbows and their knees. They get a lot of dysplasia. Spinal issues. <laughs> they get a lot of spinal issues as well. Sorry, I just like coughed in your direction. You're already sick though, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's not good. Um, and to put that much strain, even though it's not a big deal for us to have to pick up a child like this, if that child were to stand on your neck, you would feel it, and that dog will certainly feel it. These sorts of videos bother me. Children interacting with animals irresponsibly bothers me because it's not necessarily the child's fault, but there's a human, an adult, a responsible adult who is responsible for these two lives filming it, thinking it's Holy hilarious. Man, right there, your feet away. And a lot of these times, these, these videos are bordering on the verge of something catastrophic happening mm -hmm. between the child and the dog because the child obviously usually goes beyond some boundaries. So in this instance, we have two things as a parent that I saw that were really bad, even from a parental perspective, is number one, having the child step on the dog in a potentially sensitive area where the dog would undoubtedly just retaliate, right? 
if, if you hurt a dog, they usually like whimper and might snap. So that could have been one. And two, we saw the dog walk off at the end with the kid still on his back. I mean, that child could have been hurt. He could have fallen, he could have cracked his head open on the floor. So to be a parent and sit there and watch this giggling from far away, playing out in front of you, it just, it makes no sense. But it also tells me that that human, that parent, sorry, has no regard for their dog. Yes, very, absolutely. Very little, that absolutely. they value a cute clip over the happiness of their dog. And the fact that this is going on, and it seems like it's happened before, makes me worry. Because the fact that the person is there ready, I think this has happened a couple of times, so it's sure. like a repeated, yeah. I can't verify it, but it looks like a repeated motion. And this person is teaching their child that it's okay to stand on an animal. If that child tries to stand or interact with the wrong dog, it can be disastrous. You know how many vi sorry, you know how many videos I've seen of children like interacting with a pit bull yeah. and like putting the Those pit bull's ear in its mouth and you can see so the dog hard. like whale eye whale eyeing, which is what happens when a dog is, is freaking out. I'll see if I can get a good um, whale eye. Uh, insertion here so you can understand and they'll be licking their lips doing a lot of this that's the moment with avoidance before they snap and any dog can snap I don't care how good any dog is any dog if you push it far enough will snap no, don't give them the opportunity I'm gonna say that this dog was obviously a well-adjusted dog and mm -hmm. he was very patient so kudos to the dog who was very patient because when he had enough he just walked away and that's the best case scenario mm -hmm. really. It is. It's, a, it's the best case scenario. It's a testament to the Basset Hound breed. They're often very, very laid back and very, very cute. But there's still no reason to step or allow a child no. to step on its neck. So, not cute. Thumbs down. Two thumbs down. Three. Three thumbs down. Keep your kids off dogs. Why not four, but four? Because you broke this one like so many times, I can't bend it that way. Why did you tell them that? Because you, you've done it like... Ten times, not I'm sure you'll purpose. break it on camera like a fourth time. Not on purpose. How many times have I broken your thumb now? Three. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's look at it, it's decrepit. <laughs> it's <a> special fun. <laughs> but that's that's my thoughts on these particular videos. You can obviously have different opinions. You can write them in the comment box below. Have I overreacted to anything? Is there anything there that you didn't think was particularly bad? And I think that you actually would condone, or do you have the same opinions? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Danny, any final Shh. thoughts? Don't overfeed your pets and don't slap your hippos. That's about it. Don't shave your huskies. Don't shave your huskies. <laughs> what did you guys think of today's video? Do you want to have a similar video? Is there a video that you would like us to actually look at and review or to give our opinions on? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. Thank you, Danny, for giving me your wonderful insights as well. You know I love having you on my channel. Thank you. And I love that you guys tuned in, so thank you guys all very much. And I will see you in another video soon. Bye!